Alright, let me try to explain the upgrades I've done to my 3018 CNC machine. And uh, obviously it does not look like a 3018 anymore. And that is because everything has changed. Original parts left on the machine are the aluminum extrusion here. And this one. And this uh, lead screw. That's about it. This lead screw is to be for the x-axis. And they have using it here. Uh, not even the stepper motors are the original ones so let me let's let me just go through the stepper motors first so that's an upgraded one here's the original for comparison it's a little smaller i believe this one's 1.2 amps uh, this one is a 1.7 amps 40 newton centimeters and on the x and y axis i have those bigger ones so here's the original one for comparison you can see it's really tiny compared to this other one. This is a 2.1 amp, 65 Newton centimeters, uh, a lot torquier than this. Uh, next thing would be the motor itself. This is a 60 watt, 8,000 RPM motor with a shaft that goes so is one solid piece all the way uh, to the top. So it doesn't have a tiny little shaft like the one that came with it. This one, this is the original motor. You can see it has a six millimeter shaft. Really tiny. That is not the shaft, this is just an adapter. This is a shaft. This motor has that shaft all the way. One solid piece all the way to the top. Incredibly strong and rigid. The motor came with, uh, uh, with the, uh, the mount. Uh, it came with the power supply and the what is this the the controller for the motor and then uh, a display to show how fast it's running and uh, these two little controls here a knob to control the speed and then on and off so let's see how fast it's going uh, about 220 for the for the motor itself. And then uh, some of the things that I did to make it really solid and be able to cut aluminum. Well, first replace the motor, then replace this thing. That's the motor mount or the gantry, I think is what it's called. Um, so first thing is that this thing comes out way too much for the amount of holding space that he has. It's mounted on rails that doesn't have any support other than on the ends itself. So it adds a lot of deflection a lot of vibration, it's made of plastic. This type of rails are the same rails we use here for the x-axis. Um, the bearings there are not solid, they're really loose. They move up and down easy. Uh, and you know the lead screw here, here has a lot of play, so not good to cut anything, not even wood. So I replace this with an all aluminum. Right. All of it was done here in this machine as well, one piece at a time. And uh, the original bed, you can see here how much it moves. Look at that. Really bad. Right. This one does not move. Uh, so the Y rail or the Y axis, let me move this side of the way. Y axis, upgraded that part. So let's start from the bottom up. It's a 12 millimeter uh, piece of aluminum, uh, and I have uh, 400 millimeter rails. These are HGR20, and then the ball screw. These are 200, 350 millimeter SFU1204. What else? Uh, the x-axis, I have these two rails here. Those are 250 millimeter MGN 12H. And I have the same for the z-axis. I'm not sure if you can see them. Yeah, you should be able to see them. So there. And... Um, so how is this put together? Well, I have a plate, a 12 millimeter plate, actually it's a 10 millimeter plate, and it's the one uh, attached to the rails 
and the ball screw and then if I want to change the gantry I can just replace this part if I want to upgrade something I don't have to remove the whole thing I have 10 millimeter uh, plate as well for the rails 10 millimeter plate for the motor and adapter so I can put any mount I want and then the mount I have an air blast and I have another air with alcohol in it to keep it cool right. it makes finish uh, aluminum cutting really easy the columns uh, these columns are 12 millimeter by 75 millimeter so it's 75 by 12 millimeter I'm not sure how high it is doesn't really matter the, those columns were machined in this machine uh, so this is version number 3 the original one plastic uh, was used to spot drill the aluminum columns the bed and everything else and then uh, I did everything by hand second version was a little more rigid but not as accurate and that was used to do most of what you see in this machine uh, and then the third version uh, I've done some of the parts as well here but I think I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna just gonna build something bigger and this will be my second little machine the um, the back plate has an extension as you can see right here you can see right here that's because the machine is not able to machine parts that are too long I think it's, I can only do it 8 inches by uh, 9 inches so I have an extension on the back and a plate holding it together just so I have more clearance still using the original controller it's mounting on the wall because vibration is not good for the controller and it keeps loosening the USB con uh, connection which means that your machine will stop in the middle of doing a part and break the tool so not good uh, what else do we have? I am using uh, to send the programs this piece of software called Candle and the version is 1.2.14b uh, I have a few controllers here or a few custom buttons for aligning holes we're going to G and, and Y0 or X and Y0 uh, just to make it easier on myself so we're gonna run that test part or that test run and see how it does uh, we'll be doing 1600 millimeters per minute and that is a two fluid endo for aluminum so let's run it see see how it does if it breaks you know we run it too fast so let's open the alcohol the alcohol I'm using is negative one percent so the least amount of water you can get there alright, a lot of alcohol turn it back a little bit alright, let's see so, there's the port we'll send it right here So not bad, 1600 millimeters per minute, two fluid end mill. Uh, this thing is what? 
Let me move it. That is about about 12 millimeters uh, in depth in a couple of passes. And then the top, it's not the prettiest finish at the top. I think it was going way too fast. Um, it's a little rough on the edges. 